Hello. Hello. And welcome to Fruit Salad. What's today's mix? I'm Geo. And I'm Tabby. What? Witty statement here. Mm. Shit, I forgot to write one. Mm -hmm. I had one job. <laughs> Mother. Spicy. All right. <laughs> I failed you. No, I failed you again. No, you're you're fine. You're fine. See, we'll make it oh, better. Oh God. It's okay. It's okay. No. Take a deep breath. All right. Good. Let it out. I'm going to go back to breathing like normal. Okay. We want to thank you guys so much for joining us on episode 14, where we're going to talk about the things that spook the hell out of us. September 1st has passed, and that means it's officially spook season. Wait, 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 wait. It's September, right? Yes. And spook season is in October, because that's where mm. Halloween is, right? correction it's from september 1st to october like 30th 31st uh, yeah. but no but yes no if people but, can no no let's let, let if people can start decorating and selling christmas ornaments on november 1st and in some places sooner y'all have problems then i can decorate my house for halloween on september 1st which i didn't do but I embrace the spirit of such a thing. Christmas is such a glutton of a holiday. Well, I mean, how... <sighs> it kills me to, like, even say Halloween because that's not what the original holiday was called, but whatever. Was it called, like... It began with an S, right? Yes. Uh, it's pronounced Sowen, but it looks like it's spelt Sam Hain. And a lot of people pronounce it Sam Hain, and it's not. It's, so it's Gaelic. So it's Sewen? Yeah, it's Sewen. Like, like. S O W E N. Yeah, basically. Sweet. Yes. I've always pronounced it Sam Hain, too, because I don't know your language. What's well, it's not. It's just, it's Gaelic. It's where it originally came from. Yeah, I don't know your language. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> but yeah, so it's officially spook season now. I believe you. I'll yep. give you that. Yep. Anything to get us out of summer. Hell yeah. Autumn has arrived and I am blissful. Although it hasn't I'm technically not... arrived until like the 21st or whatever. It's still stupid hot down here. Like the heat index was 102. I'm sad for you. I'm sad for me too. I'm sad for me every day. It's 72 <laughs> degrees here. Oh, uh Let's see how hot it is, right? That's probably not that hot because the sun's about to go down. 82 degrees right now. 82? 10 degrees hotter feels than like, here. Feels like 90 degrees, 76% humidity. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's old, awful. good old Mississippi. I mean, that's like genuinely awful and I'm very sorry. I'm very sorry too. Yeah. So um we actually did not record last week. We didn't. Um because I had to go to the dentist. Yes. And I had gauze in my mouth and I could barely speak. Yep. So yeah. I was like, you know what? Instead of poor, poor panda having to put in subtitles for my spots when I spoke, <laughs> I was like, let's just not record this week i'll say something on my facebook that all two people that read it you know <laughs> you know people. that you, you know you know all two of you you know yeah, yeah. Pre- you know what happened you know why we didn't record <laughs> but um so this is where we get into the how was your week so yeah how was your week i'll start i had a terrible week <laughs> <laughs> no a terrible weeks oh dear <laughs> to the dentist i had to have a tooth pulled and um hey start over it i had to go to the dentist you cut out oh okay i had to go to the dentist actually i had to have a tooth pulled and it was not great um (laughs) i was scared to death i was having panic not panic i was having anxiety attack at work crying and blubbering and texting my husband (laughs) I'm... And I had to give me the gas. They had to numb me up extra good. <laughs> they gave me some pain medication. So, you know, I was 
pretty out of it. Yeah, that's fair. But I will say this. The dentist I went to is fantastic. He was really sweet. He was really nice. And I appreciate him for actually, you know, spending time with me and talking to me and getting me calm. That's he good. was he was actually a very good guy. And Yay. I have more work that needs to be done, I know, because I am a terrible person who is afraid of dentists. Mm-hmm. So I will definitely be seeing them again. And I will definitely, again, be asking for the gas. <laughs> <laughs> because just because I like you, I still need the gas because you still make me nervous. My friends, I have gathered you here today. <laughs> Ask for the gas. <laughs> I might... Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was that was exactly what popped into my head. I, I I need the gas. So it was pretty much me with um uh, my pain medication on the couch with my little nest, making a nest on the couch. I missed a day of work. Um, went back to work the next day. Oh, wait, trooper. did I? Yeah, I am a trooper. I went back to work the next day. But I, di- I didn't really talk on the phone too much. Understand. Because I had in my mouth. <laughs> thankfully, uh, you had guys really in your mouth? <laughs> hey, thankfully, nobody really called. So I didn't really have to do much talking. Okay. Um, and I started eating solid foods again, I'm... which was great. We went to the Mexican restaurant, actually, tonight. And Woo-hoo! I had... A whole fried uh, tilapia. Ooh, yummy. I know, it was great. I love ordering the whole tilapia. Nice. Fish head and all. Ew, gross. I mean, like, not for me. Like, I don't like fish, like, really at all. But, um, good for you. That sounds great. (laughs) That was great. It was great. You just peel that that meat off and put it in a tortilla. (laughs) I'd like to stay a, I'd like to stay a, um, carnivore. I don't want to go vegetarian again. (laughs) <laughs> anyway anyway it was great you know i even actually for lunch i picked up a spicy chicken sandwich and i was like you know what i've been through enough i'm gonna eat <laughs> yay so i'm i'm slowly getting back into solid foods I'm trying not to overdo it though even though today i kind of picked out yeah, also um fine. what else happened this week besides me crapping my pants and going to the dentist <laughs> oh um <laughs> And I told you, yes, like a few days ago, that I have been reliving my pitiful little teen years. Oh. <laughs> I found, like, for some reason, I decided it would be a great idea to, I saw, like, a video for, like, somebody reviewing, like, Degrassi, The Next Generation. Mm-hmm. And I remembered, like, in high school, I watched that show. And I was like... I still remember the characters' names, and I remembered a lot of what happened in that show. And I'm like, you know what? I'm going to see if they have any episodes. Where can I stream it? And I couldn't find anywhere. I couldn't find anywhere that streamed it. I think Amazon did it, but I didn't want to put it in the feed because I didn't want you to think I was a loser. Oh, my God. Just put whatever you want in there. I don't even care. But here I am telling you about it and, like, all the three people that listen. (laughs) Yeah, you were um, so worried. I know. But... You know, they have, like, all the seasons on YouTube, and I'm already on season four. <laughs> oh, my God. That's hilarious. I'm walking through the house, like, just staring at my phone, watching episodes, calling out to Jason. I'm like, man, he's being a hoe again. <laughs> She's going after Craig. Oh, dear. <laughs> and he's like, I don't care. <laughs> like, Craig's going to shoot up the school. <laughs> oh, no. He's like, what is going on in this school? It's like, you just don't, you don't get it. <laughs> You don't understand. Just, you just don't. Canada's crazy, all right? <laughs> Canada, oh my god. Yeah, it's a Canadian show. Oh. I mean, it's great. I love it. I love... It's so... It's drama, and it's great. Every <laughs> once in a while, I'll, I want to watch drama. No, know? that's and understandable. Like, you know what? So many memories watching this show. It's like, I've... Yeah, I've burned through, like, four seasons. Hey. In, like, a few days. I- I'm... <laughs> yeah. I understand the need for drama, you know? I do. I do. I get it. I I get my drama uh, watching Wife Swap. (laughs) Oh, yes. I got to actually watch that show. As soon as I finish up watching my binge watch of Degrassi, I'm going to remind me to watch um, Wife Swap because that actually sounds pretty funny. We could watch. Oh, my God. That would actually be a fun one to watch together. 
Yes. <laughs> so why don't you tell me how your <clears throat> weeks went well uh hulu started uh, st uh putting a uh, wife swap on their channel so um <laughs> well that, well for those who don't know because i didn't know whenever you first told us so, told me about it what is what is wife swap oh uh, it's one of like the few shameless reality shows along with like the amazing race that i love to watch wife swap is where they um basically pick two families in america that are very um opposite of each other mm -hmm. on purpose and um like they'll take <laughs> they, they i don't want to bring that one up um they they took like a millionaire and a woodsman's wife and had them switch places um oh lord yeah it's it's very funny uh the wives switch places for two weeks for the first week the wives have to obey the rules of the household and follow what the wives do every day um and then for the second week they get to change the rules and it's kind of like a way to see like how the how other people live and like maybe there's things you can adopt or change or like you know grow as a person but most of the time it just results in delicious drama. <laughs> oh, I imagine so. So whenever you say like the first week, second week, um so is this just all contained in like one 45 minute episode or is it enough. like is there like a part 1 and part 2 of these episodes? No, they're all in one episode. Okay. Yeah, you get a story and a resolution all in one. Okay, good. Yeah, at the end good of every episode, they have a roundtable discussion where both couples get to talk to each other at, like, a restaurant I mean, or something. Aren't they worried that they're gonna, you know, woohoo? Oh, the, you can't touch the other person. That's, like, oh, one of the okay. rules. You cannot touch each other. Okay, and they sleep okay. in different rooms. Okay, good. Because I'd be, if I got on that show... I know for sure that Jason would be like, no. <laughs> <laughs> and I know I would look at him and I'd be like, don't you dare. Don't you dare. Don't you, I don't want any other woman coming in my house, <laughs> touching my dogs, eating my food, Imagine my man, imagine, not going to happen. <laughs> imagine if she sent your dogs on vacation for two weeks or a week. No. There was a, no. there was a woman there was a woman that like forced the dogs to remain outside of the house for an entire week and I was like oh I'd kill her <laughs> I'd kill her too no no the, my babies my babies yep exactly they are my little they are my children <laughs> so I sunk a lot of time into that and um mm -hmm. mostly in like the evenings so I was trying to fall asleep otherwise I've really just been building my greenhouse and working on art commissions um so i've had to use a pickaxe the last couple of days <laughs> to um tear up the ground because we have a lot of clay um and so it's kind of like concrete because it's clay and stone and sand because we're coastal and it's just uh -huh. um yeah it's horrible when it's all dried um Luckily, we had like a microburst downpour a couple of days ago, and I went out there after it cleared up, and the ground was so much softer, so I finished up there leveling and whatnot. I built the frame for my greenhouse, and I just have to attach it to the house and then assemble it, but it's kind of a job for two people, so I don't know if I'll get it done on my own or if I'll have to wait um, until I have help. But either way, most of the hard work is done. I'm so proud of you for that. Oh, because thank you. I know a lot of work is going into this, and I think that it is really cool that you're continuing to push through it. Just Thanks. remember to take your time with it because you know you're by yourself to, trying to do it, and yeah. you could you could overexert yourself. Well, it's not hard for me to overexert myself either because I have a I have a medical condition that <clears throat> makes it so I can't really be out in the sun for long periods of time because of the heat. Um, mm -hmm. It'll make me like super sick. I've had heat stroke like five or six times in my life already, and I'm only 29. And um, so I have to be careful. I can only go out when it's cloudy or in the evenings. So I can't work all day on it unless it's, you know, raining really, which then it's just not safe really. <laughs> but... Yeah, then it's like you can't. <laughs> I know it's it's kind of awful, but it's all right. I'm getting it done slowly, just bit by bit. So, yeah. One thing a day. And you're doing a great job. You're showing me pictures of your progress, and it's looking great. Yeah, thank you. It'll look better you're when doing, it's done. <laughs> you're doing a wonderful job. Uh, thank you. You're welcome. So, Panda. Yes. I kind of 
bleeped, like not bleeped, but blipped about it before. What is blip, blip, blip. this week's topic? This week's topic is fears. Fears. What are we what are we scared of? What are we scared of? What are you scared of, everybody? I'm scared of a lot of things. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. Um, let's start it off with um, childhood fears. Ooh, you want me to go yeah. first, or do you want to go first? How about you go first this time? I usually always go first. Let's, right. let's let you go first for once. <laughs> Doesn't matter to me, but I'll go. So childhood fears. Um, actually, I haven't thought about my childhood in a long time. And so I was kind of took a moment to like sit down and meditate about it for a bit. Mm-hmm. Um. And I remembered, like, a lot, I, you know, I have some carryover fears from when I was a kid to when I'm an adult. But um, when I was a kid, um, I was always afraid of being, like, abandoned or left behind. Like, I would have nightmares that my parents, like, we would all go somewhere. And then I'd be walking around looking at things and getting distracted. And then I'd hear a car and they're driving away. They just, like, forgot about me. (laughs) Oh, Lord. Um, and I like I used to have nightmares about that all the time. It was so bad. Um, aliens? Yeah. Uh, that started in my childhood. Let me get signs. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, my, my mom. <laughs> my mom let me watch that movie when I was in grade school. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Probably, probably the year it came out, honestly. Um... I think I was in, like, fourth or fifth grade. Third grade, maybe. I don't know. But um, I was kind of spooked of... Actually, I wasn't really spooked of ghosts. But the fae, like, gnomes and fairy folk and stuff like that, I was terrified of as a kid. I didn't trust fairies. I didn't trust Tinkerbell. (laughs) Well, Tinkerbell's kind of... She's nothing like what... She's a pixie, but, you know. She's nothing like what um, Disney is portraying her to be now. You know, she's nice and helpful and kind to everybody. <laughs> no. no, that's not what she was like in Peter Pan. No. Nope. Twin- Tinkerbell was a bitch. <laughs> Tinkerbell got windy captured, guys. <laughs> she was a grade A bitch in Peter Pan. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And And it was such a good portrayal of, like, that myth and legend of the fae. Like, not fairies and fae folk, like how Hollywood represents them now, but I'm talking like, look at the book of Kells guys. Look at the old myths and legends of like the Celtic people. Like the fairies were like, stay away. (laughs) We don't want them here. (laughs) And we respect you, but please leave us alone. (laughs) Please stop. Please stop. (laughs) What about you? you? Don't you know do that? Yeah, no, no, no. But what about you? Oh, I've, a lot more fears than you (laughs) i mean like i can't really remember all of them i mean as a kid i was kind of afraid of the dark um i had to force myself to get over it oh um spiders didn't like spiders as a kid what wait what else didn't i like oh my god oh my god this one's really funny marijuana (laughs) yeah i was honestly afraid of pot good job mom um (laughs) oh my god did you watch Reefer Madness when you were a kid? Is that what happened? <laughs> no, 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 no. I just, um, yeah, I guess my parents just scared me off of drugs really good. Not that they, like, like did it or, like, I mean, like, okay, so hilariously, they did smoke weed, but, like, I didn't know about it until I was an adult. So, like, good job, but. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's pretty impressive, guys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, really good job. I, I had no idea. <clears throat> Honestly, I had no idea until I believe I told the story in a previous episode of when we found like four, like several ounces of weed in my dad's closet after he passed away. <laughs> yeah, but oh my god, yeah, it was really funny. Anonymity, you have no idea. Okay, um, what about you? Well, before we get back, um. <laughs> Didn't I, like, send you a copy of, like, Reefer Madness? Oh, God, yes. <laughs> yes, you did. It's amazing. I sent you a note with it. What did... I can't remember what the note said. Oh, my God. It was... It was... Um, I could find it if I dug through everything, but... Oh, we don't have time for that. Yeah, I have to go through my files. But it was... It was basically along the lines of... 
I think you were like mocking, like ch- mock chiding me. For, yeah, I was. Like, I was not like, making... like smoking weed. You're like, watch this, you hooligan. Yeah, it was something like that. It was you call me like a hooligan. Or I called you a heathen. A heathen hooligan. Or probably something. like a junkie or something. Yeah, yeah, something like that. It's <laughs> like you heathen junkie. Mm-hmm. <laughs> watch this and repent. <laughs> And it's like, <laughs> I love that movie it's it because good. it's so over the top and hilarious. I I love it. I love, I even love those 50s, like, short movies that you got me hooked oh on my, to. Oh, well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> something that I like to listen to or when I need something to have in the background, I usually find a playlist of 40s, 50s, and 60s. Um, educational short films that they would play in schools like proper etiquette or how to date someone how uh, just much little life lessons how much yeah, affection is life... too much affection is my favorite <laughs> little little um life lessons that you would play for kids and high schoolers you know just and it's just really cool to see that this is this was how it was back then you know it's just really interesting to listen to. And plus, their voices are so soothing. You know, it is weird. It has, like, that audio quality that is oddly relaxing. It's very relaxing. I can and they have, out. like, yeah. this calming music that they play, too. And sometimes, like, I'll just sit and watch them. Because I love seeing what the fashion was. But how I much think... things cost. The economy. How they lived their lives. I just adore watching little little bits like that. It's just okay. Anyway, I'm getting way <laughs> off track. That's okay. Uh-huh. That's what people come here for. All five of you. All five. I know. I was like people. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. <laughs> My childhood fears. Um, I was painfully afraid of the dark as a child. Um, I had a nightlight, and my door was always cracked open. So, yeah, I always needed some light because I was scared to death of the dark. I had a nightlight, too. It was a Roadrunner <laughs> nightlight. I can't remember what my nightlight was, but um, it worked. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, it worked. It was a baby Roadrunner. Like, it was just one of those stupid little plug-in lights, but the cover was, like, an oval, and it had baby Roadrunner going beep-beep on the front of it. Oh. And, like, I used it until I was in high school, I think. Nothing wrong with that. I think that's adorable. (laughs) Like, for the longest time, my favorite blanket was, like, this little mermaid, like, comforter. Uh And I use, I I didn't stop using it until, I don't know what happened to that blanket, actually. The last thing I remember was that it went with me to the dorms (sighs) when I was actually in college. Mm -hmm. Because I remember I stuffed it into, they had, like, my whole side of the dorm room was decorated in Hello Kitty. I had a Hello <laughs> Kitty TV, Hello Kitty phone. That's amazing. I had Hello Kitty everything, okay? Honestly, so naturally, my bedspread and pillowcases were Hello Kitty. And I actually had, like, this blanket case where, you know, you stuff a blanket inside and, you know, it's... Duvet boom. cover? Yeah. Yeah, that. That is actually, boom, it's Hello Kitty now. <laughs> So I don't know what happened to that blanket. I honestly don't. I can't remember what happened to it. That's sad. It had to have left with me. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I had a I had a bedspread that I used until it literally went threadbare, right? Like, my mm-hmm. mom was like, we need to get rid of this. I'm like, no, it's my favorite. It was 101 Dalmatians. Oh. Oh, my God. I still have the pillowcase. Like, That's amazing. I know. I wish I still had my little mermaid blanket. <laughs> I don't know where it is. I think it's in storage somewhere, but I have it. <laughs> All I know is that th- that thing has been washed so many times, you could barely see that it was a Little Mermaid. Oh, my God. Barely. I'm, like, honestly terrified to wash my stuffed animal that I've had for, honestly, since I can remember. He's as old as I am. <laughs> well, <laughs> I have a stuffed animal. Um, I have a teddy bear named Arsenal, and I don't care if y'all make fun of me. Um, that's my teddy. I sleep with my teddy every night. I am 35 years old and I cannot sleep without my teddy bear. I'm 29 years old and I have a bed full of stuffed animals. Kiss my ass, right? Like, come on, own it. (laughs) I need, I need my bear. I need my bear. 
And when I first, I don't know, like I've had Arsenal since I was like 17 or 18 years old. And how I discovered it was that I was walking along campus one day and I was at the college gift shop and I saw the bear was actually on the floor face down. And I was like, oh, this is a shame. So I pick it up and I put it back on the shelf and I left. And then like an hour later, I was like, no, I want it. So I went back and found that same bear and I bought it. Oh, <laughs> gave it home. And now it's so, you know, whenever you buy a stuffed animal, it's fur is so smooth and silky and straight. And then after you've had it for like yep. years and so much wear and tear that its fur gets like matted. Yeah, it's not, it's like, it's, it's matted, but it's not like nasty matted. It's not gross matted, you know, it's, it's just, it's natural. Yeah. It's from all the hugging and squeezing and. All the tears you know. and everything else. Yeah. Oh yes. All the sloppy tears. Yeah. yeah. And, and, um. God, I wonder how many tears yes. stuffed animals absorb. <laughs> so I've, I wash, I try not to wash them too much because I don't want too much damage done to them. I want them to last. I'm still not sure if I want him to be buried with me or if he is going to be displayed. Oh, no. I don't know. Somewhere. Whatever. <laughs> it's just something, I, something I thought about is like, I don't want to trap my bear in, in a coffin with me, you know? Oh. <laughs> it's like, it's a bear. He's like, he's, he can see. He's got feelings. <laughs> I don't want him to watch my corpse rot. Oh, my God. You know, like, I, I, I was totally of the mind that, yep, puppy's getting buried with me, but. Now you said that, and I'm like, <gasps> now it's, it's something to think about. Now, isn't it? It's just horrifying. And then it's like, what do you do? Give it to a kid? Like, no. And they're gonna they're gonna lose it. Or oh my god! Treat it like crap. They're not oh gonna god. take care of it. It's like, what do you do? Oh my god! Like I didn't like I I'm a very generous person. I was a generous kid. Like, but I wouldn't let anybody touch puppy. Like I love animals. I. I had to fight the urge to kick a dog that stole my stuffed animal. Like, I I didn't do it, but, like, the urge was there. But you wanted to. <laughs> but I wanted to. <laughs> but oh you were a God. kid. You were a child. So, I mean, that's, yeah, it's fine. It's fine. If you did that when you were, like, today, then, yeah, I might say you, you kind of need to just calm down the anger there. <laughs> if Quinn got a hold of that stuffed animal, I would yell at her. Yeah, yeah, we're not gonna, we're not, we don't go around kicking, <laughs> kicking dogs, guys. Yeah, us. no, we love, we love our fur babies. I love my babies. Uh, let's see, what else was I scared of as a kid? Horror movies, surprisingly. That's, that's really funny. Yeah, I love like I said multiple times, <laughs> I said multiple times that, um, I could not walk down the horror movie section. <laughs> in a movie rental place yep. because just seeing them would give me nightmares. I remember my aunt back when they lived in Louisiana. Well, they wait. Yes. They still live in Louisiana, but back <laughs> when they lived in Buras before Katrina hit and all this, and I was still just a wee little baby. Nice. She used to work at a radio shack Ooh. and back when radio shack actually, you know, had movies for rent and stuff like that. Yeah. And I remember, I remember, like, we would go and chill out at the store and look at the movies and just sit. I don't know. She was watching us for the day, I guess. <laughs> so People would hang would out in Blockbuster sometimes, you know? We would just chill out at the Radio Shack. And I don't know whose brilliant idea this was, but they had, like, movie posters of, like, Child's Play <laughs> like high up on the wall so it's like you walk in you see it bam doesn't That's matter amazing. how tall or short you are bam Chucky's staring at you right in the face amazing but the one thing I remember the one movie poster I remember the most have you ever heard of um a movie called Village of the Damned no I haven't but I, I need to add that I'm also terrified of dolls to my list like as a kid <laughs> and now but go ahead <laughs> um there was a movie called uh, Village of the Damned, and or was it Children of the Damned? I have to look it up now. I know what the poster looks like, but it's been so long since I've seen the movie. I think it's Children of the Damned. Children of the Corn? <laughs> Probably Village of the Damned. Children of the Damned, 1995. Yes, 
I'm actually looking at the poster now. And it's horrifying. It's um, it says beware the children, and it's basically three kids staring dead at you, pale skin, white hair, and glowing red eyes. And that I'm I'm gonna send this picture to you actually. I'm sending it to you right now via messenger. So be on the lookout for that. Um, bam. I walk in Radio Shack all the time as a kid. And I have to look at that picture. I to and it's like, messenger. it scared the crap out of me every time I went there. Oh my God. Isn't that horrifying? That is horrifying. <laughs> I remember that poster though. And I, I actually watched the movie, Charge you know, phone. years later when I was older and it's, you know, those that fear of that movie poster still kind of carried with me when I was a probably a tween or teenager. So it still kind of freaked me out watching it. But now it's just kind of funny. <laughs> kind of a funny movie. <laughs> um, Chucky. Chucky scared the crap out of me as a kid. Yep. Mainly because uh, my uncle had a Chucky doll and he would, t- he would terrorize us with it. <laughs> oh Thanks, Uncle God. John. God, that reminds me. Do you remember what? the do you remember the um the movie Hide and Seek that had Robert De Niro and Dakota Fanning in it? No, actually I don't think I've seen that one. Oh my god, it's good. Um <laughs> I think it's called Hide and Seek. I, I have to look it up, but um basically the whole premise is like this dad, you know, is kind of psycho. And um his, mm-hmm. his daughter has to escape from him, but he, like, follows her in this, like, yellow rain jacket with, like, a chef's knife type of a thing. That was, Ooh. like, the iconic image, right? And so my mm-hmm. friends and I, we watched it as, like, a scary movie in high school, um, like, freshman. And we were all kind of freaked out about it. And I had two of my friends over. Two or one? I can't remember. But um, anyway, my dad. <laughs> My stepdad came around the corner. He's like, girls, he called us from down at the bottom of the stairs. And we're like, yeah. And he's like, will you come here? <laughs> we all come out. And he's standing at the bottom of the stairs. He had the exact same jacket. <laughs> he just, oh, my God. He owned that jacket. And he was like, oh, Lord, this is funny. He was just ready for it. I think my mom prompted him to do it. I don't know. Like, oh. I, I don't know what happened, but she was always the one that was, like, the scare master, so I don't know. But but he came around, I looked at him, and just cold fear, right? And my my friend screamed, ran back into my room, and shut the door in my face. <laughs> she let me in! She got oh, there that is first. horrible. Yeah, what she got that? there first and she didn't let me in. I'm crying and screaming. And uh, he's at the bottom of the stairs doing the. Right? And he doesn't coming up the stairs, but he was just. The first yeah, he's making it sound like he is. <laughs> I, I was sobbing. Sobbing. And she finally let me in. We slammed the door. I can hear my mom cackling, just howling downstairs. And so I immediately knew everything was fine. And my friend, poor Emily, had anxiety, and she was in the middle of a full-blown panic attack <laughs> underneath my bed. I sitting here like Emily, you gotta go. I know Emily. <laughs> you need to go home now, Emily. I don't think I could be your friend. You, I could have died. <laughs> You left me out there to die. It's true. She did. She left me out there to die. She finally opened the door. Ain't that shared dream we had? Shit. I know. I, know. I died for you in that dream. You did. You did. I ride or die, Panda. I'm there with you. Oh my you. god, Emily. <laughs> Seriously, what the hell? Panda and I choose to die together. Thank you. We die together. Ride or die. Ride god. or die. Oh my god. All right, what else am I scared of <laughs> as a kid? Um, ghosts really freaked me out. Like, like, um, not like boo ghosts, like um, poltergeist kind of mm. ghosts scared the crap out of me as a kid. I couldn't watch poltergeist because it was a scary movie. <laughs> yeah, same. Uh, ghosts and stuff scared the crap out of me when I was a kid, too. But I just decided to be a witch instead. Hi. <laughs> ah. <laughs> Another thing that I was scared of as a kid was being home alone. 
Ooh. I didn't like being alone. I remember one time um, I wasn't feeling good, so I had to stay home from school. And my mom, she had to go to work. My dad worked offshore, so and my brother was feeling fine, so he had to boop his ass to school. So it was just me. You know, I mean, I wasn't a child, you know. I was kind of like, I want to say like 12, 13 years old. Old enough to look after myself for a few hours while my mom went to work, Mm -hmm. you know. I mean, I wasn't like super sick to where I needed somebody to look after me. You know, I just wasn't feeling my best. I could walk around. I could, you know, fix myself something to eat and go lay back down. It wasn't a big deal. So nobody think, oh, nobody think bad of it. I probably was faking. I can't remember what was wrong with me. (laughs) But I remember um, I was watching something stupid. Like, I think it was The Outer Limits. Mm -hmm. Because I usually played that usually played um, during the time that I was in school. It was probably an episode of The Outer Limits. And this is how big of a wuss I am. It's broad daylight. It's raining a little bit. I get freaked out watching The Outer Limits. And I get scared because I'm by myself. (laughs) You know, I get scared because it's raining a little bit. (laughs) And I get freaked out over some stupid TV show. And I call my mom at work. And I'm like, Mom, I'm scared. Come on. <laughs> and she's like, what's wrong? And I remember, like, we had a plastic bag, like, on a counter under, or on a table. And I don't know. Maybe the AC kicked on and it kind of, the air kind of pushed the <laughs> um, plastic bag off and yeah. fell onto the floor. And I squealed. Like, I shrieked. I actually screamed. Oh. And she's like, okay, I'm coming home. I'm coming home. <laughs> <laughs> I got freaked out over a little rain, an Outer Limits episode, and a bag falling onto the floor. That's precious, though. Like, as a kid, of course you would be scared. My mom probably missed, like, a whole day of work because of my retarded ass. (laughs) (laughs) How old were you? Um, Like I said, I had to have been, like, 13 or 14. 13 or 14, yeah. Okay. Old enough to know better, <laughs> you know. I think that's funny, old enough though. to have a freaking spine. I'd be like, oh, but like it's it's like I could see it. Like a, something suddenly moves in your house when no one's there as a kid. Yeah, <laughs> it's scary. Oh, and you know, um, <clears throat> you mentioned something earlier about, about being scared of dolls. I remember, yeah. um, my brother was kind of a you know kind of a, <laughs> like six old brothers. All siblings are an ass when you're growing up, you know. It's not until you become, like, older teenage, you know, or adults that you actually really connect and bond with them. And I'm sorry, I feel like I got to sneeze, so if I pause, that's why. <laughs> um, so I was kind of actually, I think we watched something to where we thought that toys would come alive, like, at oh, night. It Boy wasn't Soldiers. Toy Story. I I didn't see Toy Soldiers. I think it was, I don't know what it was, but it was probably an episode or something that freaked me out. Outer Limits, Are You Afraid of the Dark or something. I don't. Stupid. But my brother is a genius, okay? He, he is a absolute genius because I kind of always said I was a little freaked out of my dolls because I had like 20 million Barbie dolls and baby dolls. Yeah. And he was like, Oh, I think I saw that one move. You know, he was very subtle with the way he would mess with me. Oh, no. He's like, I think I saw that one move. (laughs) And then when my back was turned, he would actually kind of move it a little bit. That's rude. (laughs) And I would see it's in a different position. So all day, I'm getting really freaked out. (laughs) Because he keeps messing with me. He keeps f***ing with me, okay? (laughs) He keeps f***ing with my psyche. (laughs) Oh my god. And to top it all off, when I am asleep, <laughs> this fool grabs a Barbie doll. Oh no. And he actually takes mom's like little sugar dish or whatever and he leaves like Barbie footprints in it and like makes like little trails like on the table. Oh, he is a genius. Footprints. He is he is a evil genius, okay? Oh, that's marvelous. And he would make like little little trails and stuff, and then he'd put the doll back where it was, sugar all on her feet. Chaotic and evil. Next all morning, the way. I wake up. 
Next morning I wake up and he's over by the kitchen table. He's like, Hey, what's this? <laughs> and I'm like, Oh, oh my God. What is that? He's like, it looks like footprints. I'm like, that is footprints. <laughs> You're right. He's like, your dolls are, I think your dolls are alive. And I'm like, oh. Time to so, duct yeah, tape bro, those boxes closed. I did not forget, bro. <laughs> I can still live with that every day. Beautiful. I'm not scared of dolls now. I love dolls. I love dolls. So. I hate dolls. <laughs> with a burning passion. Why do you hate dolls? Though? I'm terrified of them. What is it? Is it about their eyes or their I don't know. faces? I had lots of baby dolls, lots of Barbies, because relatives mm-hmm. would buy them for me. And I did like Barbies when I was younger. You know, it was fun playing house or doing whatever. You know, yeah, going on adventures. Doing kid stuff, like yeah. child, child play, you know? Yeah, doing I child stuff. Play like Harry Potter and Lord of the Rings with my Barbies, right? And mm-hmm. so one of the other things I had a lot of was porcelain dolls. Oh, those are always haunted. I don't care what they say. They put the ghost into them in the factory. I don't even care. But it's just (laughs) built in horror. (laughs) It's built in horror. And honestly, I had this. There's this one doll that I I don't know if I have anymore. I think I got rid of it because I hated it with a passion. It was beautiful doll. Absolutely gorgeous. And these were like expensive dolls, right? I feel bad for hating them. But it was like my aunts kept buying me dolls. And I was Mm -hmm. like, please stop. But this is so cute. Please stop. <laughs> Please no. So I, stop it. To Get be, some help. To be polite, I had to put them up in my room. So if anybody ever came over, they would see them. They like, would oh, see yeah. Them. They so, wouldn't get their feelings hurt. So they sat right next to my bed for Ooh. years growing Ooh. up. And I had Ooh. this one doll that, um, was a choir doll because I was in the choir. So oh, novelty dolls, right? These ladies had shopping problems. Um, and a doll problem, okay? Fucking doll problems, man. And they all got me dolls. I don't understand. Um, <laughs> <laughs> my stepdad's side of the family, the crazy people from New York. Um, it was a choir doll, like I was saying before. And it had its mouth open. As it was singing from a book, right? Like a caroling doll. It was all dressed up for Christmas caroling. And the mouth was open. And like it it, it just led into the cavity that was this doll's head, right? So mm-hmm. it wasn't even like a painted open mouth. It was just a black orifice, a black hole of demons, right? So <laughs> this doll, I had one hell of an imagination as a kid, which is why I have an imagination today. I would have nightmares. I would wake up in the middle of the night and I would swear the doll's lips were moving. At that distance well, you see as a crazy kid. crazy shit when you're a kid, you know? Yeah, you do. Like, I saw elves and trees and, like... Um... Oh, I saw unicorns in the clouds, huh? I admit. <laughs> yeah. You see crazy shit when you're a kid. So, like, as a kid, I saw this doll, like speaking but there was no sound but the mouth was moving which it wasn't of course but like in my head it, it absolutely in was. your head it was yeah it was real to you the end of the porcelain dolls being in my room happened when we were still in new york and mm-hmm. um and what happened is i had a sleepover one night we were hanging out in my room in the morning sleeping right and there was this like Something shook me awake, and I looked up, and my porcelain dolls were all dancing on top of my shelf that I have them there. They were dancing because we were having an earthquake, but I did not understand. <laughs> you, it didn't register. Yeah. So I, I just start screaming. And, and that's what alerted everybody and woke people up that we were having an earthquake including my friend who just looked horrified and crawled like three feet away from me because I was just staring at the dolls and screaming my head off. Yeah. I don't like dolls at all. Still don't. There's no shame in that. There's no shame in that. There's lots of people that are really put off by dolls. I will have a Ouija board in my house. I will not have a doll in this house. When I come visit, I'm going to bring you a doll. (laughs) Don't you dare. I, we can burn it together. We could have like we could like roast marshmallows over its hollow it's, corpse. How you get demons? Okay, sounds good. <laughs> no, I wouldn't do that to you. I know you're scared of them. I wouldn't do that. Uh, I'll bring you a plushie. Yay! I love stuffed animals. Okay. All right, let's see. We've actually talked 
a long time about childhood fears. fears. I know. Let's try to run right quick through um, adult fears. Like, what fears do we have now? I'm still scared of the dark. I am not. Like, I don't need a nightlight <laughs> or anything anymore. Like, that's fine. I can deal with the dark. Yeah. But, like, when I talk about I'm afraid of the dark, I'm afraid of pitch black dark where you can't see your hand in front like of your, your face. own hands. And yeah, that really freaks me out. Never like, if go the, to Idaho. If the lights suddenly go out in the house, you know, everything's pitch black. So, you know, you can't see anything because your eyes haven't adjusted yet. Everybody's always said, you know, you you don't shouldn't be afraid of the dark. You should be afraid of what's in the dark. And I'm like, well, the dark is what covers it up. Okay. Yeah, exactly. The dark. <laughs> it's like, it's like what you said makes no sense. Actually, um, being scared of the dark is almost, you know, just evolutionary. But at the same time, um, yeah, why why wouldn't you be kind of freaked out in the thing that happens, the natural state of the universe? <laughs> Yeah. darkness <laughs> I, d I don't like it I yeah. don't like it I'm not as big of a wuss about it but no I think it's fair know. we don't have the equipment to see in the dark without you know like specialized night vision goggles that we had to make you know what I mean oh my goodness so it's understandable it's actually a wise fear it means you're afraid of the unknown I'm also afraid of mannequins now yep F mannequins I don't like mannequins I remember we me and a group of friends, we went to a haunted, not a haunted, well, a, a haunted house attraction. You know, I can't remember what it was called. Like 13 levels or something. I don't, I don't know what it was called. It doesn't matter. All I know is that you had to go through like these different stages and each stage would get progressively horrifying or so they said. A lot of them weren't that bad, but there was one. It was a mannequin room. And I remember I just, I mean, I was fine. You know, was, everybody, they'll jump out at you. You see something kind of creepy or scary. And you're like, oh, that's good. That's good. I like that. But when I got to the mannequin room, I had, my friends had to help me leave the room because I just stood there <laughs> screaming because I did not want to go in there. Oh, my Lord. You I should... had to be escorted through it. <laughs> uh, you should never go to a wax museum. Oh, God, no. You won't catch me in there. That I have, is messed up. I have been to Madame Tussauds Wax Museum in New York. I've never been more terrified and excited about being at a place in my life because it's cool. But, like, it was also during Halloween, so they had, like, a haunted house section mm -hmm. in there that you had to go through to get out. <laughs> Screw that. Screw you guys and your cattle guard attractions. <laughs> oh, my God. Let me out That's if just... I want out. <laughs> I want to go. <laughs> you can't keep me prisoner here. Oh, man. Then I saw House of Wax as a kid, and I was like, I'm never going into a wax museum again. <laughs> yeah, Indeed. That, that movie was more gross than it was scary to yeah, me. Yeah, it was disgusting. But I mean, I didn't, I didn't watch it as a kid. You know, I watched it. By the time it came out, I was probably, like, older teen. So when I watched it, it wasn't scary. It was just really gross. It Very was gross. gross. Yeah, like I'm I talking about the remake, not the old, not the original. I'm talking about the remake. The remake was just gross. You're you're talking about the remake with uh Paris Hilton, right? Yes. Yeah, it's also got um uh Jared Padalecki who plays Sam Winchester from Supernatural. <laughs> I knew he looked. I I knew that guy looked familiar. I was like, poor Sam. Oh my God. <laughs> uh, moving on. Moving on. <laughs> Scared of Dennis. Dennis. <laughs> Dennis scared the crap out of me. <laughs> it's not. It's not. It's not you. It's me. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> the thing is, I was explaining it to my husband whenever we were. He's telling me I need to go to Dennis. It's like, what? Why? Why am I afraid? Basically, it's because I know it's going to hurt. He was like, well, they're going to numb you up, you know, but they got to hurt you before you feel numb. They got to prick you with that needle. Yeah. In your mouth. Yeah. And that hurts. Yeah, it sucks. <laughs> it sucks a lot. Yeah. So it hurts to go. Um, there's people standing over you with their fingers in your mouth. You always feel and there's judged. nothing. You feel, yeah, there's a shame in going to the, like, there's a shame. And Jason's like, you know what? I know, I know, I understand the shame, 
but they've seen a lot worse. Don't worry. It's like, I know, I know, but it's just, it's, I, I don't like the shame of having to go. Yeah. But the other thing is that you have no control. Nope. And you know, I, I feel a need to be in control a lot. Yep. That is, it's a sense of pride with me. I have to be in control. So to be in a chair, leaned back with people standing over me with things in my mouth and I can't speak and I can't leave. I can't do anything. I have, I'm stripped of all of my control. That mm. scares me. Yeah. So I that's why that. I am afraid of Dennis because I have no control and it hurts and mm -hmm. there's shame. Mm -hmm. No, I'm the I'm, same way. Like, I'm not scared, but like, I'm always, I would just say extremely uncomfortable. I have to like mentally tell myself to unclench my hands from fists at my side. You know, like I have to keep my legs crossed because if I don't, my feet will just like my toes will curl. Like I'm just so like bringing my extremities closer to my body <laughs> I don't mm -hmm. like it. Yeah. It's uncomfortable. Not scared, just uncomfortable. Like, like when I actually went there, I was actually trembling in the chair. Aww. Like I was actually vibrating. It was it was pretty bad. My poor panda. <laughs> I I don't like I don't like it. I don't like it. It scares the crap out of me. That's the worst. I don't like the ocean. I don't I don't like it. Yeah. That's fair. Mm -hmm. I like it. You can't get me in there. No. No. No, 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 no. No. That's fair. I mean. Seen Jaws. Yeah. No, thank you. <laughs> I've swam at that beach. <laughs> I uh, bet you have, you little weirdo. Hyannisport, Massachusetts, Cape Cod, man. Um, Jaws is still a scary movie to this day. Oh, of course it is. But it's old. It, it, it's an old movie, but it is so scary. Yeah, it's really well it's done. Freaking ocean. Yeah. You know, I don't okay. have so much a problem with, like, the sharks and stuff. Like, crabs can just leave this world, go somewhere else. Um, But plants, actually. Mm. Plants in the water. Love plants on land. I have a greenhouse. You know, I'm building a house for them. Like, <laughs> You're building plants... a special house for plants. Yeah, but plants in the water? No. No way. Kelp is monster fingers. It's... Mm -mm. I don't like... I don't like anything in the ocean. I don't like the plants. I don't like the fish. I don't like the sharks. I don't like the dolphins. Dolphins are assholes. I don't like them. Given my choice. I don't care how smart they are. They're assholes. <laughs> Given my choice, I'd rather swim in a pool than anywhere else. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. If I'm going to swim somewhere, it's going to be where my feet can touch the bottom. Yep. And there's no sharks or anything that can, you know, take a bite out of me. Mm -hmm. I don't mind deep pools. I just, because, you know, it's just the pool, right? But... Yeah. Yeah. It's a pool, but. There's a big difference between a pool and the freaking ocean. <laughs> or like a diving pool. That would be a little uncomfortable. Oh, no. See, just pools. Pools in general don't bother me. A diving it's pool the ocean. that's like hundreds of meters deep for pressurized diving? Yeah, that's I could swim in that. a black, empty maw of nothing calling you down to the bottom? Oh, okay, okay. That's different. That's different. <laughs> if I can't see the bottom, then you, that's different. You can't see like, the bottom. Okay, then no, I wouldn't get in there because something either. could be down in there uh -huh. waiting to drag me into the depths of hell. See, no. you fear the unknown. Yeah, yeah. no, I, I don't like that. <laughs> and another thing, the final thing that really, it does, it scares me because it's unnatural mm. and it's very off-putting. And I know y'all are going to laugh at me, hmm. but trees planted in rows. Okay, but that's unnatural and creepy. Like, I'm not yeah, scared of it. Yeah, it's very creepy. But I'm not going to walk in it. <laughs> yeah, you're not going to catch me walking in. Like, if I'm walking in a forest, and this has actually happened, I'm walking, like, in a forest, and then all of a sudden the forest ends, and I'm in an area where trees are planted in rows, I turn right back around because oh, that freaks the hell out of me. It's scary. It's, it's, it's very scary. I, it's, and I've told people before that I am afraid of, trees planted in rows and they're like that is so weird i'm like yeah okay <laughs> it's not really weird if you've never been it's... in it it probably sounds weird but like find one of your local like replanting areas mm -hmm. like an older one that's been up for like 10 or 20 years go yeah. into it it's unnatural as hell it's so scary like the woods have their own like ambiance of amazing and neat and kind of spooky right 
Yeah. But trees planted in rows are horrifying. I, I don't know what It's it just, is. it like we've said it 10 million times, it's unnatural. unnatural. And you can feel that. It's just, it invades like your blood. And you just feel that something's not right. Yeah. Yeah, it's you know? definitely off. Like you look to the left and all the trees are straight lines and they're uniform. And you know that it's... It's not naturally like this. This isn't how they grow. You know what I think it is? It's the Uncanny Valley. Trees planted in rows uh, preside heavily in the Uncanny Valley. Yeah. If there was a forest in the Uncanny Valley, it'd be planted in rows. (laughs) Yeah, I I am not buying a ticket to the Uncanny Valley. Nope. Do not try to sell it to me. So do you (laughs) want to run through your adult fears right quick before... Because you did mention weird phobias, and I want you to be able to talk Absolutely. about that. Absolutely. We can go longer than an hour. Who cares? Um, okay. Yeah. So more adult fears that I haven't already, like, piggybacked off of yours, because you know, it's just easier that way for my brain. Um, no. <clears throat> like I said, water plants. Uh, being abandoned and aliens have held over from childhood fears. I'm actually not afraid of the dark anymore, um, oddly enough. That's not to say if I get a weird vibe from a very dark, spooky place that I'm just going to waltz into it. I got a weird vibe. I'm not going to go in, right? Yeah. <laughs> but um, <clears throat> one that's kind of deeper, I guess, is like dying alone. I don't mm-hmm. I don't want to die alone. Um, and That is a legitimate fear, though. It is a legitimate fear. And mm-hmm. it's and it's like. I have a fear of like my body just failing on me you know just giving out right but yeah and i think that's you know that's kind of a common fear people have especially people with illness you know and it's just i don't know it's weird but um well i already know i'm not gonna die alone because i've already said in the very first episode of the podcast that i know how i'm gonna die i'm gonna get hit by a truck no. somebody's gonna be driving that truck so i know i'm not dying alone oh my god you better not You better not. (laughs) I know I'm not dying alone because somebody's going to run my ass over when I'm trying to go into the store. You're definitely not. Because these people around here don't know how to drive. (laughs) Not happening. I won't. So I'm going to have somebody with me when I'm dead. (laughs) Uh, I ain't worried about that. Don't you dare leave me alone. (laughs) (laughs) I'm just saying, I ain't worried about dying alone. (laughs) I know how I'm going. (laughs) Man. I am, though. But yeah. Um,. I don't know. Most of my most of my fears now as as, you know, an adult are kind of deeper, more emotional than like more existential. The yeah, they're more existential. They really are. Um about the only thing that I'm scared of is like aliens, bad aliens. But like Yeah, I mean, spiders make me uncomfortable. I'm not scared of them anymore. I catch them in jars and release them outside. You know, it's not a fear. Um, Yeah. People, like, I feel confident enough in myself of handling people. Like, I'm scared of other people, but that's, like, a rational fear that's, like, people do some really messed up stuff. Yeah. So, I don't know, like, I'm I'm more uncomfortable about a lot of things than actually scared. And the things that I'm genuinely yeah. terrified of are, like, being abandoned, dying alone, like, choking on my own vomit, you know, the numerous times a day. You know, it's just, it's really scary stuff that's... They're adult fears. Yeah, they're adult fears. And, you know, people don't really talk about it much. <clears throat> no, know. they don't. And I think it's something that should be talked about, you know, with more yeah. people. I, th- I agree. I agree. I because you shouldn't feel, you know, scared. You shouldn't be afraid to talk about your fears. No, definitely not. Because I think I think it's interesting to share what we are afraid of. Yeah. Because it's interesting. Because I like learning what people are afraid of. Because yeah. I can use that. I can use Oof. that against. Them. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> not really. Um, no, it's just it's an interesting psychological topic to talk about it really is i'm just interested in like getting a peek inside people's minds and i'm not the Mm -hmm. type of person to ever like use it against somebody i just i just like to know i like to know how other people think Mm because i don't you get i so isolated in your own mind when you don't talk about this stuff and you start to think like am i different from all these other people and it's like the more you talk to people the more you realize that man we are all living in a world that we are just terrified of right like it's (laughs) It's not hard when you speak with rational people. 
keyword. I also would like to add that I am afraid of Australia. Everything in Australia wants you dead. Yeah, I'd like to go, but like <laughs> with a <the> gun. No, <laughs> um, such an American thing. No, I would. I, I just give me a long stick and tell me what I need to smack away from me. Honestly. Yeah. Um, but I love snakes. I love snakes and that kind of stuff. I don't like spiders, and they have some horrifying spiders. I'll go to New Zealand instead. Okay. I'll take eels over spiders any day. Jeez. Eels are delicious. Eels are delicious. I love eel. Yeah. I love mm. unagi sauce. Eel I just sauce. like it. Eel taste. Now I want eel. But I'm, I'm smack dab in the middle of freaking Mississippi. Mississippi. Don't you I can't find eels? any decent eel around here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <sighs> I'm so sorry. I'm sorry too. <laughs> oh, man. Anyway, um, did you have any more adult fears that? Not really. You know, we got all deep about it for a second, and then I kind of lightened up the mood. Yeah, I didn't want you to. I didn't want should... you to leave sad. No, I'm. I'm good. I'm. You know, I've come to terms with my fears too. So it's like mm -hmm. I'm, I'm not afraid of ghosts and stuff like that. I'm like more freaked out about people. Honestly, yeah. it's more just like a discomfort and untr and distrust. And you know you got me. I'll make you feel better before we have to go to bed. Oh, of course. I feel great. It's we could keep our peeing to take our mind off of our scarediness. Woo! What about some, like, weird fears? Have you ever heard of, like, weird things? Like, I have a friend who's terrified of I want of you to be able to tackle this because you're more prepared for weird phobias oh, than I am. Man. I actually want to see what you pulled up. Oh, I have so much. I, yeah. So it's... give me... Give me some really funny ones. All right, so we're gonna lighten up the mood after you know all of our weird fears and <laughs> existential fears. I consider so let's lighten up the mood with some funny phobias. Hell yeah! I um I consider like aliens a weird fear, kind of because like come on. <laughs> oh no, man! I mean, I can understand a, a fear of aliens because um, it's a fear of the unknown. I was know? yeah, it's it's actually kind of freaky that I believe in aliens. I do because oh, me too. It's, I, I think it's kind of selfish to assume that We're we are alone ones. in the universe. Yeah. It's kind of weird. Kind yeah. of, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Kind of arrogant. It is arrogant To think that it's only humans mm -hmm. on this one planet when there's like galaxies and universes and everything. And now evidence So yeah, of... I know there's something yeah. out there. No. It's just that they're, they probably like, Earth is Earth is crazy. It's just, we're probably one big reality show to them. It's like, what's happening on this season of Earth? We're just quarantined. COVID! <laughs> the entire Milky Way is quarantined. Everybody's <laughs> outside the Helioplex. It's fine. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I, I do believe that aliens are out there, and I do believe that they do kind of like zip around, like check on us. Like, yeah, you guys are crazy. We're mm. not ready. We're not ready to make contact yet. Absolutely not. Um, I have a friend who's terrified of chickens. Um, that one's kind of. Funny. I can see that because I don't like birds. That's fair. So that's you know it's a valid fear that a lot of a lot of people surprisingly have that they're kind of terrified of birds. Um, mm -hmm. So <laughs> I find that like the list of phobias, some phobias are so disrespectfully ironic. Um, yeah. My favorite one is. And let's see if I can get this right. Hippopotamonstraquipedalophobia, which is a 36 oh, letter word that stands for the fear of long words. <laughs> so they made it so 36 no <laughs> le letters long. Oh my goodness. It, no. That's cruel. I mean, that's straight up cruel. <laughs> okay, I got one. I got one. <clears throat> How about, okay, I'm going to butcher this because these words are too freaking long. They're amazing. How about arachibutyrophobia? Oh my god, arachibutyrophobia? The fear of peanut butter yes. sticking to the roof of your mouth? <laughs> yes! Isn't that great? <laughs> okay, okay. How about this one? This is actually pretty great. I love the name of this one. Papaphobia. Papaphobia? Is it the fear of soda? Papaphobia. Fear, the... of, the, fear of the Pope. <laughs> it's called papaphobia like p-a-p-a -P -A. papaphobia oh, pap fear of the pope papaphobia interesting because the papacy got it oh I i'd say papa like like daddy papa yeah no it's it's probably stands for the papacy oh uh, yeah papaphobia the... yeah. i can see that 
Okay, what what's one you got? We can exchange funny phobias. Uh, nomophobia. With my ten percent. <laughs> Your ten percent. Nomophobia. I got ten percent life. Okay, yeah. I, I'm. Put, what, go ahead. Give I'm me your so one because I know you said it like twice. I'm so sorry. It's so bad at the <laughs> timing. It's terrible. No, it's great. Mm. It shows that we're real people. I know, right? So this one I found hilarious, and I suffer from it sometimes. Nomophobia. Is that fear of gnomes? <laughs> Nomophobia. No, f- the fear of being without your phone. Okay, yeah, I can see that. I'm that same way too. Uh-huh. I'm addicted to it. I don't even care. How about um, genophobia or genophobia? Genophobia. Genoph- Is that like the f- fear of genophobia? Actually, I don't know. Tell me. It's the fear of knees or kneeling. <laughs> I'm so, scared of a knee. So if you have papophobia, do you also have genophobia? Like the fear of kneeling? Cause... I imagine so, because you gotta kneel before the Pope. It's <laughs> fantastic. Um oh here's one that like I mean it's not a weird I mean it's kind of a weird fear, because like, come on. But and I don't mean that disrespectfully, but like Oof, I'm sorry for anybody that has it, but like we all have it at some point when we're kids. Arithmophobia. Mm-hmm. So what is that? The fear of numbers. Oh, numbers just piss me off. Yeah. I'm not scared of numbers. They just make me mad. Exactly. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I got the words are just getting progressively longer as I go down the page. <laughs> I got one. I got one where you try to figure out how to pronounce one. All right. How about um Anatidaphobia. I don't know what that is. Anatidaphobia is fear of being watched by a duck. <laughs> I've heard of that one. I love that. Like, I've heard of the, the fear of being watched by a duck. I didn't know what that was the word for it. That's fantastic. Um, what you got? Xanthophobia, which is the fear of the color yellow. Ooh. Like, whoa. I don't know. People are actually yellow, scared though. of yellow. I like yellow because it's the color of lemons. Oh, it's sunshine. And and Sigurd is a lemon. He is a lemon. (laughs) How about um, denopnophobia? Denopnophobia. Oh, no, no, no. It's de... de I don't know how to pronounce these big-ass words. (laughs) It's Um, okay. Deipnophobia. Deipnophobia? It's the fear of dinner parties. (laughs) Ooh that one yeah i mean i'm not okay, afraid let of me them. do Oof. let me do one more because i'm like one percent on my phone oh no oh no where's your charging oh uh, uh, it's in the house <laughs> how, about, Go get it. how about pognophobia it's the fear of beards <laughs> the fear of beards all right no, so i cannot use my phone anymore because my phone needs to survive it's gonna live on that one percent so Give us a couple more before we have to go. Okay. Um, Albutophobia. Okay, what is that? The fear of bathing. All right, now y'all need to get over that. <laughs> I know. Y'all stink. Uh, <laughs> one of my favorites that I think is just ridiculous, um, Triskaidekaphobia. Wait, the... I think I know that one. Mm. Triskaidekaphobia. Yep. Tris- Triskaidekaphobia. I've heard it. I heard it. Yeah, you've what heard it from it? me before, probably. Just the decaphobia. Okay, I won't be able to get it. What is it? Fear of the number 13. Yep. Yeah, I wouldn't have got, been able to get that, but I knew I've heard it. I've heard it before. <laughs> I um, believe it. Yeah, along those lines. Um, oh, God. Here's the long ones. Frigatrisca decaphobia. Is that being scared of somebody saying frig? <laughs> it's the fear of Friday the 13th. They chose frig because of Frigga, the Norse goddess. Ah. Yeah. Frigga. Frigga. For those of you that don't know, the day Friday is literally named after Freya or Frigga's day, which is Old Norse. So you're welcome. Yes. Um, yes. Friday. <laughs> I'm going to call it Frigga day. <laughs> Frigga. Frigga day. Happy Friday. Happy friggin' frigga day. <laughs> it's perfect. Um, the last one I have, like, written down and prepared. <clears throat> oh, my God. If I can if I can get it out. I think I can. It's Hexaco-Sio- 
hexacontahexaphobia. Okay, now say it again. <laughs> oh, hex. Oh, God. Hexacosio hexaconta exophobia. Yes! That was I good. knew you could do it. Okay, now tell me what that uh, jumbled mass of letters was. Fear of the number 666. Seriously? Yeah, yeah, straight up. <laughs> These people, these people have like arithmophobia everywhere. Yeah, uh, people. Imagine if these were like your spelling words in fifth grade. I imagine that these like these little kids, you know, <laughs> that actually go like on national spelling bees. They could probably spell this. Oh my god, they probably could. Yeah, they're better spellers than I am. Honestly, <laughs> I tried. I try. I had to type in triskaidekaphobia because. I wasn't honestly sure how to spell it. I was so wrong. I was so off. Isn't it crazy? It was pretty crazy. I was like, oh, wow. It's like, oh my. Oof. Well, we hope that kind of lightened up the mood. All right. I think that should just about wrap it up for this week's episode. Thank you so much for joining us today on Fruit Salad. What's today's mix? <laughs> Wait. Witty closing statement goes, um, Geo. Hmm? What? You you forgot to fill in this one too. What um, what were you uh, what were you doing all day? I don't know. <laughs> God. Oh, you poor thing. Oh, well, if you guys have something you'd like to hear our comments on, please be sure to leave us a comment or send us a message at fruitsalad.whatsthemix at gmail dot com. We'd love to hear from you. I'm Tabby job she's what? just she losing it you're losing I, it I, i'm geo i guess you are geo yeah i guess <laughs> just, again we'll see you beautiful people next time okay bye okay bye <laughs>